you. So we have with us today three fantastic students um, who have studied abroad here at the university. Really excited because COVID really wiped out our study abroad population. So very excited to hear from them today. So we have with us Dennis, who is a freshman biology major. So he just studied abroad in Oaxaca, Mexico over spring break and did a medical internship program. We have Taisha, give away Taisha, uh, who's a senior philosophy and Africana studies double major, and she studied, studied global security and religious pluralism in Senegal, one of my favorite places, with SIT. And we also have Ms. Brielle, who is a junior public relations major, who was a 2021 Frederick Douglass Global Fellow. So for those of you who don't know about the Frederick, Global, Frederick Douglass Global Fellowship, um, that is an all expense paid experience to Ireland um, where she learned about justice and effective leadership across cultures. Um, so we are going to get started with a little intro video that Maya is going to share and then head right into some questions for our panel and then open up for a Q&A afterwards. So take it away. Thank you for that wonderful introduction, uh, Jamila. So I'll go ahead and show, share my screen. Um, so where we are with studying abroad is that we, there are multiple options. Um, and this particular trip does show Howard University students on a, traveling to Columbia. Um, this is a faculty led trip. So a professor at uh, you know, Howard University led this trip, organized this trip. And this is one of the options you could do. Um, so we'll go ahead and watch from their experience initially arriving to Columbia and the impressions of one of the students um, after her first day. I'm not getting any sound. Yes, uh, no sound on our end either. Oh, okay. So there's no sound for you guys? No, okay. Um, let me see if I can pull this out and then let me know if it works now. Is it working now? I'll start it over. Here and already kind of lost, you know, trying to find a bathroom, trying to find a bathroom. Trying to find a bathroom, for <laughs> real. For real.
Um, you can hear the audio um, in, in class. I think some other people are having trouble too. Okay. So, um, all right. So, can you hear me now? I can hear. All right. All right. So, at this point, I'll just stop the video um, because it seems like people are having issues hearing it. Um, and we'll just move on and hopefully we'll gain just as much from the video as we will from the panel conversation and Q&A portion. Um, but yes, yeah, so that was just a video. If you saw anything in regards to the visuals, there was a portion where they showed the hotel, they showed traveling through the airport. You know, they stayed in a hotel, but that's not the only type of accommodation you could have. And, you know, Jamila and I were having a good conversation about this earlier today about managing your expectations when you're abroad, because this is not a necessarily a five star, you know, resort stay. Um, so she did show a little bit of a hotel and some of the scenery. So hopefully that helped. All right, Jamila. Yeah, I think it's um, unfortunately the um, audio didn't work. Um, technology isn't always our friend, but I think it did give a nice visual um, for students just to be able to see a little snapshot of Columbia and the baggage situation. I always tell students to pack light, pack light, pack light. Um, you don't want to be struggling with like two huge suitcases um, when you're going abroad, but it's a great segue into hearing about some of our students' reflections, so we're just going to get right to it. So our first question, um, and Brielle and Taisha and Dennis, you can just take yourself off of mute, whoever would like to take it first. If you don't have anything sort of more to contribute, we can just move to the next question. Um, so what motivated you all to study abroad? And definitely start with sort of a little overview again of where you went um, and how long you were there. Uh, hello, my name is Dennis Titsu. I went to Oaxaca, Mexico, and I stayed there for the whole spring break, so about one week. What prompted me to um, study abroad was the fact that when I was in high school, or even in middle school, I saw a lot of students who were in immersion classes, especially um, who, were, um, who were in French classes and Spanish classes, who got to go to um, France or Spain, respectively. I've always been an avid fan of learning about geography and different places around the world. So when I got the chance to go to Oaxaca, I, um, I try to make sure that I didn't pass up the opportunity because of how expensive it was. I splurged, like for the first time, I splurged so much I'm trying to get the tickets and the, um, and the fee for the program. And to be honest, it was a very huge, it was a very great splurge. However, I've always wanted to travel the world, especially to Latin American countries. Um, 
And surprisingly, um, I've always wanted to go to countries around South America too, like Colombia or Argentina. And I'm also learning about Mexico because I'm also an Hispanic, I'm a Spanish minor. So if I went to these countries, my Spanish would improve. And that is one of the reasons why I wanted to study abroad. Awesome, thanks, Dennis. Okay, I can share. Hello everyone, my name is Brielle Smith. I'm a junior honors public relations major from Atlanta, Georgia, obviously attending Howard University. And I chose to study abroad because I have been sitting at home due to COVID for a year and a half. I was so tired of sitting at home and attending Zoom University. I was like, I'm not having it. There were discussions, oh, sorry. <laughs> there were discussions about um, the school obviously returning the next semester being virtual. And I said, I'm not doing it. If I'm going out the country, I'm gonna go study abroad somewhere where COVID's a little bit safer. And that's how I actually ended up running into the Frederick Douglass Global Fellowship Opportunity, which is the program that I studied abroad on. It was a four week intensive um, leadership and cultural immersion um, studies program in Dublin, Ireland, where we got to basically study transformative leadership across cultures. So we started, studied the Ireland and Northern Ireland conflict, as well as we got to meet the different leaders, such as prime ministers, the Taoiseach, and the mayors of Ireland. And it was just a good opportunity because I have interest in international affairs. So it was a great opportunity for me to, one, intersect my career in public relations, but to finally get out the house after a year of COVID, after a year of not even being able to travel, you know, outside of the state, I finally was able to hop on a plane and go outside the country and it was amazing and my overall passion for studying abroad lies in the fact that I'm super curious about other cultures and about the different experiences that you get when you study abroad as well as the different people that you meet every time I've been able to go abroad or study abroad I've been able to meet new people and it's always been um, not only exhilarating but it's been so enriching for myself and for my mind and for my personal studies. Excellent thank you how about you Taisha? Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Taish Weber, and I'm a senior philosophy and Africana studies double major. Um, I studied abroad with SIT in 2019, right before the pandemic. Um, and I studied, I studied uh, religious pluralism and global security. And what motivated me to do that was uh, one of the professors at the institution was going on a promo campaign and he had visited my uh, history of Africana studies um, philosophy class. And he posed a question and it really sparked my mind. He was like a vast majority of Africana studies students and African studies students do their studies outside of the continent. How nice would it be if, if it was the opposite? And I was like, okay, he sold me. I need to find a way to study and I need to find a way to get to the continent and do what I'm doing here, but in a, in a different capacity. And also I've always wanted to kind of spend time back at home <laughs> um, and the tropical weather and just enjoy, enjoy life. Excuse me, guys, I live by three hospitals. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, also, I wanted to take advantage of the opportunity to study as a college student um, because, like, you can travel, like, once you graduate and do things, but, like, to be surrounded by other students and then have the, the guidance of, like, professors and things with you, it's a totally different experience. And I was able to get a full semester length worth of credits. Like, I was there from August until December. So I was, I was there. <laughs> Awesome. And I think it's really fantastic um, that we have such a diversity of experiences. So we've got all the way from a week um, spring break experience to a full summer or a month during the summer to a full semester. And I think this really speaks to um, the different um, opportunities that students have to study abroad. It's not a one size fits all. If you can't quite manage um, a full semester because you can't find classes abroad, um, then you can you know, look to do a summer experience and or a semester, I'm sorry, a, some, a spring break <laughs> experience um, as well. So I think that's um, really great. Um, what do you all feel like would be sort of your main takeaway, like either in the classroom or Dennis for your internship experience, um, you know, 
sort of in the classroom or on program and then outside of the program? What do you feel like was sort of your main takeaway? I would say my biggest takeaway from my study abroad experience was really learning how to um, network and connect with people. That was the greatest gift that studying abroad could have given me. The other fellows that I was on the program with, we are the best of friends. Um, since studying abroad this summer, we've gone to meet up in New York. Some have gone to Mexico. So, you know, we're obviously forever connected. And I think that those bonds that you make when you choose to step out there and study abroad are, are the most valuable thing that you're going to receive because you're, you're starting to plant seeds in literally so many other places. We came from all across the United States. And now I have friends on every coast. Um, so that's really amazing. And the people that you make or that you meet are going to be wonderful. And a lot of times, just like me, when you're going on a study abroad program, you're not going with people, you know, so it's very scary. It's very nerve wracking because you don't know, like, who's going to be here? Am I going to get along with anybody? But you guys are all experiencing this one unique experience. So it's almost guaranteed that you're going to find family when you come out of it. So that was the greatest takeaway. Um, in general, but also outside the classroom. But inside the classroom, I think the greatest takeaway was just the insights of others. Again, because you're studying abroad or because you're experiencing these programs with people who come from completely different backgrounds than you, they have very different beliefs, very different identities, then as a result, you get to hear their insights, you get to hear how they think or how they process things. And as a result, even in my daily life today, I can pick up what other of my what other fellows on the program, how they would think and how I apply that thinking to some of my approaches in my daily life, because it's new perspectives that I would have never come up with on my own or I would have never thought about. And now I'm walking around with the perspectives of other global leaders just like me. Same here. Um, it when I was um, conducted research, I was with four other people. Some, one was a junior, a few were um, a few were seniors, and another was because it was five people in total, and one was a actually a postgraduate. Um, we learned how to uh, we learned how to conceive, like help during conception or conceiving. We were in a hospital. We also learned how to use injections, syringes. But even outside our um, outside our lessons, we were able to have fun. We went out to eat. We went to restaurants. We got to see the places. I feel like because of that, our bond grew and grew and grew. And I see them as my friends. But to be honest, before when I first met them, I was really scared because I was the only freshman. I was the only um, yeah, I was the only freshman to actually um, be on this trip. But over time, I got to warm myself up to them, and we really bond and we really bonded so much. And also with other students, with other students um, in in the universities in Oaxaca, we got to make we got to make friends with them too. And many of us followed each other on Instagram, so it shows that it, the relationship between us and those students from Oaxaca. Um, it won't go, the bond won't break. It's very strong. Yeah. Um, my takeaways from the classroom. Sorry, Vince. Okay. Um, my takeaways from our classroom experiences were that, like, our your position as uh, as a person who's American is really important when you're outside of America. It was like one of the big things that we focused on was like positionality and like how our actions affect others and how we, whether we know it or not, whether we sign up for it or not, we are reflect we are reflections of our country. So it's like it it put that into into a different context because we weren't in America learning this. We were like, we would have like reviews of like how our weekends were. And it was just like, oh, this actually could have became an incident or this is something that was way deeper than I once thought it was. Um, and to Brielle's point, like the relationships that you make, like it, you, you really don't get it until you get it. But it's like, I know I will know these people and love these people for like ever because of the things that we had to go through. Um, and further in the classroom, 
I do attend Howard, obviously, and this is an HBCU, but the vast majority of students on the trip were coming from PWIs. And it was interesting to hear their experiences from like back at their home universities and how they would approach things and um, operate in the classroom and different things that they were learning, different styles of things that they were learning. And like compare and contrast our like university experience, our classroom experiences and what we brought to the table. Um, on the other hand, like outside of the classroom, I really learned how to be like a global citizen. Um, you just like, once you get there, like you're on your own, like you, you are full fledged, like adult and over it was like that was like a lot of time to be just alone and it's like yeah you have a whole family or you have your own accommodations but you are responsible for yourself in an environment that's like totally different from the one that you're used to it's like nobody really holding your hand as much so it's like you have to learn like maybe perhaps how to cook for yourself but like all these ingredients are new like all these things that are new and if you're in a country that's not an anglophone country you're doing these things in different languages and it's just like you know you gotta know how to pack your bag you gotta know how to make your routine meals you gotta know how to navigate public transport or do things like that so it like it grows you up and that was something that I noticed in myself and in other students and I'm super thankful for that really really fantastic perspectives and I think you all hit the nail on the head because I know from my own experience and living abroad and now having relationships with people all over the world, it's really the folks that you meet. Like it's nice to be able to go out and you know, see the Eiffel Tower and the monuments and things that you've kind of read about in your history books, but the relationships that you build is just simply priceless. And then the perspectives that you gain um, along the way is invaluable. Um, Taisha, you mentioned um, your living accommodation, so that takes us right into our next question. So can you all kind of, there, there's such a variety of what that can look like when you are traveling abroad. Um, can you all share a little bit about what your accommodations were like in your respective Oh, I'm sorry. So just so I can jump in for a second. Yeah. Um, so Roosevelt did want us to explain what a PWI is. Um, oh, okay. I know sometimes as college students, we have these terms, but they're familiar to us, but not to the younger generation. So um, PWI stands for predominantly white institution. All right. And that is not what Howard University is. We are an HBCU, which is a historically black college or university. So when we say PWI, it's not an institution that uh, mostly or primarily serves people of color or black students like Howard is. Awesome, thank you. Thanks for jumping in. Um, so yes, yeah, so we were um, at the question of um, your living accommodations. Talk to us a little bit about what that looked like in your respective So in Ireland, our living accommodations were student housing. We stayed, we didn't stay directly on a college campus, but we stayed in what they call student accommodations. And so it was almost similar to a mix of a dorm room and an apartment. Um, and basically in our student housing, there would be about five girls. Of course, we were separated by gender. So there would be um, females and males, but there would be about five females per one pod. And we each had our own private room and bathroom, but then we all shared a kitchen space as well as a common space. Um, so it was almost like an apartment with your own bedrooms. I think that's the best way to um, explain it, but it was still small enough to be dorms and it was still a students only community. So even like our staff members that were our advisors didn't stay there because it was strictly a community just for students. Um, and I loved it. I personally, again, because of COVID, I didn't get the full dorm experience in college, which really sucks. So it was amazing to be able to go over to Ireland and almost have that feeling as well as again, when you guys go to study abroad, Yes, you're there to learn, but you're also there to have fun. Um, that's a big thing about studying abroad. I, I feared the stereotype that I was just going to be around a bunch of nerdy people that just wanted to sit and be in the books all day. And while I can do that, 
your school hours, after school hours. I want to have fun. I want to go out to eat just as you guys probably do. So having that living style and that living arrangement was really amazing because we got to go to class. And then after class, we got to go shopping or we got to go home. And even because since we had our own cooking spaces, Taisha may even be able to attest to this as well. But you get to cook for yourself and for your friends, which is really awesome because even though you guys are all in a new country, Again, some people came from California and the way that they do tacos is way different than I do tacos being from Atlanta. The way that other people do tea is very different from the way that I do sweet tea because I'm from Atlanta, I'm from the South. So it was a really cool experience being able to share that um, apartment slash dorm feel. I lived in a house with a host family with the four other people. Um, because there were four rooms, oh, I had a single and two other people had a single, but then there were two more people who had to who had to share one single room. Um, so for each room, we had a bathroom and a bed and the rooms were just very colorful. I just loved it so much. It was simple. It wasn't com it wasn't complex. The TV didn't work, but I didn't mind. Um, I wasn't in the house that much. We were we had to wake up at six o'clock to get to the clinic. And then we would stay there until 12 o'clock and then we would just go out. We'll just be out. We wouldn't be in the house for a while. Um, so every morning we would, because we had to leave very early, we would just be given a sandwich and a bottle of water. Um, it was enough for me. But then after we came back, we would go back to our to the house to have some dinner. So the whole family would give us, a, give us around like um, tortillas or tacos or um, anything corn-based, it was good. It was really delicious. And the host family was extremely friendly. Um, we had to share the, um, we had a, sh it's kind of complicated, but the house, the structure was a bit complicated because even though there were four rooms, there was another on the um, top floor, there was another series of rooms for another family that was living there. But the scenery, scenery, like when you go out into the patio or the veranda, you could see the whole city and it was practically beautiful. It was practically beautiful and it had the mountains. Um, otherwise, yeah, I would agree with Brielle with how um, we're mostly here to not only just do our work, but also to have to also have fun. And that's when that's kind of the reasons why we don't um, we don't stay in the house that much because we would usually be out partying. I'm usually not a party person, but I know the people who went with me are. Um, we would go out to restaurants, we would just see the places, see many musicians just playing their in instruments. So I would say the living, the living accommodations were quite awesome. They were nice. Cool. So um, since my experience was a little bit longer, I had a variety of living experiences. So there were moments where I would be in a student house or I would be with a family if we were, because we were traveling around the country the entire time. There would be times where we were like beachside in a villa. Um, <laughs> there were plenty of hotels and things that we stayed at, like ranging from like, not hostel type, but like, okay, you share a room with students who came with you to like, oh my God, this is like a five-star hotel. Like we're living really lavish. And I think um, part of the the benefit of spending such a long time is that you kind of control, like you're really in charge of your own budget too. Um, so with certain pro, I know with SIT, like you have the option to kind of upgrade what they provide for you but there is a base level and it's like i thought that was really cool um and because we were in country we were studying with students like we met students from the local university who would sometimes uh, integrate with us and do things that we were doing so i actually got to see their dorms like on their campus and i was like wow this is like this is this is crazy but i think for me definitely like the fact because we were traveling so much we would stay in hotels a lot so like I've been in some really like 
beautiful, amazing, stunning hotels. And then I've been in some like, well, this is kind of sketch kind of places. <laughs> um, but it, it, was, it was super cool. Like I had a range of experiences. And this goes back to my point earlier about learning how to be like a global citizen, like learning, like you really learn how to be a traveler because you're moving a lot. Like you're not just staying in one place. Like it is a college experience you are studying, but because you're abroad, like these programs, they want to make sure you get the, the full breadth of the country. So you're you're constantly on the move. Like you, you learn how to pack your bag really quickly. Um, I think the most beneficial, uh, well, the most rich experience is staying like at a homestay or something like that, because you, you really start to get into like the nitty gritty of like how this country is, because you not only get to participate in a family, but you get to observe one and how they move. And you can see the similarities and the differences between your family back home and your family there. And it's just, it's really rich how you like, how you learn to integrate and, and how you adapt your behavior and how they're curious about you and you're curious about them. And sometimes like you don't even know like what they're saying, but it's like you, you still, you're, you're all still human and it, it is really cool. And it's like, yeah, but definitely, Hotels are my favorite part because I, we were living very lavish. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you all so much for that variety of experiences. Um, you know, to Taisha's point, I tell people all the time, like travel is one of life's best teachers. If you can get yourself there and back again with all your stuff and, you know, you cooked for yourself along the way, you've managed all these things, that in and of itself is a great accomplishment. Um, Definitely the homestay has um, its own unique attributes, just as being in a dorm situation or a um, hotel. So I think just understanding that there's this variety out there, there isn't, again, a one size fits all experience. And knowing that, you know, when you go to look for the different opportunities that you may have in the future, that these are some different options that will be available to you and their pros and cons to each one of them. Um, can you all talk a little bit about maybe if there were some challenging aspects or anything unexpected um, being in your host country or getting there and back, something that maybe you didn't think of before you left that you wish that you knew? Um, yeah, you take it away. Any challenges or um, things you wish you knew? I could definitely give a couple. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges that people don't realize when they're going to a new country, and I fall victim to it every time, I always forget a phone charger or a converter for my phone. I am that kid that is always in the airport landing having to get um, a new plug because the outlets are different in other countries, um, as well as like SIM cards. So I didn't necessarily experience this, but a lot of my other friends on the program, you have to remember that um, the, the cell towers are different. So if you're with Verizon or AT&T AT over there, over here, it's going to be different over there. So oftentimes you need to go and get an international SIM card. But I think the biggest issue that people run into, which I also ran into, was understanding the cultural differences. And for me, when I'm traveling to Ireland, I feel like they speak English over there. They were also up under the British crown at one point, just like we were. So everything should be the same. But you have to understand that every country um, and every place that you travel to has its own um, cultural backgrounds that you have to be respected to. And so again, um, while I was there in Ireland, I was studying the Ireland and Northern Ireland conflict, which is something that I honestly knew nothing about before heading off to Ireland. Um, um, part of our leadership program was really understanding like conflict management. And I had never heard of the Irish conflict simply because I'm over in America. And while our news may be prevalent to them, um, it's not necessarily readily available, or readily talked about over here. And so when I got to Ireland, it took me a minute to one, understand the gravity of the concept. But once I did, I had to be very mindful, just as you are in the States when you're talking about certain topics, to be very careful and consider about what you're saying and who you're saying it around. 
Um, and I even got to the point where I feel like, okay, I'm a social justice warrior and I'm very neutral on the topic. So I'm going to use the, the politically correct terms. And I remember talking to a local who obviously they hear your accent. They, they know you're American. They want to talk to you. And they asked where I had visited. And I told them that I had visited a place called Derry slash Londonderry because um, it is a city that is heavily involved in this conflict. And if you're Irish, you call the city Derry. If you're, uh, if you're Irish Catholic, that's what you call it. And then if you're a Protestant English, then you call it Londonderry. And I felt like the most political correct way to, to not put in my bias when talking to a stranger was to use both of the terms for the city. Boy, was I wrong. Boy, did he go off on me. Um, and as well as all my friends, all the Americans that were in the vicinity, we all got it. Because I made that one mistake. And he's like, you don't say London Dairy, it's just dairy. Um, and of course, to me, I think I'm being politically correct. I think that I'm, you know, being respectful of both sides of the conflict. But no, you have to learn that you have to be very careful about what you're saying. Um, and I would definitely wouldn't advise anyone to just run away from the topic, but you just have to be very mindful about how you approach things and how you approach certain conversations. And I was able to de-escalate it by allowing him, like letting him know, hey, um, I'm American, so I'm not as familiar, you know, so I apologize if I offended you. But that's something that you have to be so mindful of that you can easily offend anybody if you, you know, kind of step outside the norms of their culture or if you cross over certain boundaries that they have. So be careful of that. <laughs> Um, so I spent a lot of time in Oaxaca, because I spent a lot of time in Oaxaca, I had a um, deal with um, speaking Spanish all the time. What's, what most people don't understand is that just because a lot of countries in Latin America speak Spanish doesn't mean that they speak the same Spanish. Some countries have a lot of dialects and other um, forms of speaking. So like you will hear people say Sally Valley, which means okie dokie, um, or people would say when for vecho, which means is which is another way of saying bon appetit or good appetite. Um, I had to learn um, the Mexican Mexican slang and other forms of Mex Mexican Spanish so that could help me out when actually speaking to a lot of people because there may be for there may be phrases like que padre, which means cool, or um, I'm still trying to think of some. But what I'm saying is that you're just gonna have to be mindful of, um, based on the different countries you are in, especially in Latin America, where you say, where you have to, um, you're just gonna be mindful of um, what you say when you're in um, other countries in Latin America. Because I also learned that in some countries like Argentina, people don't say tu, they say vos, whereas, in other countries like Mexico, they would say two and not both. Yeah. Awesome. So I think some challenges for me, um, and I, I, I alluded to this a little earlier, it's like the length of your trip kind of matters because like at first it was like, okay, we got class, we have all these things that we have to do, but like after about a month in and you really start to know where you're at, like you're you're in college, like you want to party. So it was like you have to balance the fact that like you are here to study, and like, oh, this is actually a really cool place, and I'm having like the time of my life. So that was a challenge for myself and my group of friends because we definitely were like, nah, this is too lit. <laughs> Why are we going to class at seven a.m.? What are we doing? Um, but don't don't be like that. Um, Another challenge, like, for certain people is, like, like the climate. Um, like I mentioned, like, some people were coming from, like, different areas of the United States, and they hadn't really thought far about, like, thought deeply about where they were going. So it's hot a lot of the time. So a lot of students were experiencing sunburn and other, like, skin issues. Some people were getting destroyed by mosquitoes because they didn't know, like, they just didn't know how to operate like that. So that was a challenge for like some other students. Like, um, and yeah, I think those were like the two, the two biggest things, like prioritizing your studies. Like once you get, once you get acclimated, like once you like figure out, oh, okay, this is where I am, this is what I want to do. And then also just like being mindful of like the everyday things, like the everyday environmental things. Like if you're from a rural area and you're going to a big city, like you gotta learn how to navigate public transport 
or vice versa. If you're coming from a big city and you're now in a rural area, it's like, I hope you have good shoes. Like, you're walking, you're walking. <laughs> so yeah, those are two big things for us. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing those challenges and tips um, for going abroad. So we're gonna wrap up this um, panel section of um, our time together with one last question for you all before we move into the open Q&A. And that is, um, how has your study abroad um, experience influenced your personal growth or career aspirations? I saw going to Oaxaca as a rite of passage. It helped me learn how to do things on my own. It was my first time actually leaving the country without a parent. I've been to Ghana about three times and the Bahamas about once. But um, knowing that I got to leave the country um, by myself helped me to grow confidence. It helped me to build my confidence in doing it again. So in the case that I do do it again, and obviously I will, especially next year, um, because I do hope to study abroad when I'm a junior, I would have the knowledge of how I did this in, um, how I did this about a month to help me do it again, um, next year. It was actually pretty fun trying to travel out the country alone. It's, um, it's a pride, it's very thrilling. It gives me thrill. Yeah, I think that's probably one of the biggest uh, impacts on students is that you get bit by that travel bug and like you can't wait to do it again and see something new and experience and um, meet new people and all that sort of thing. So great point. Thanks yeah. for sharing. No problem. I think just like Dennis, I've been bit by the travel bug too. I'm looking forward to just more broad experiences. Um, of course, I... I'm at the end of my college experience, so I won't be able to travel abroad anymore as a college student, but I'm excited um, as an adult to enter out into that big girl world and see what it's like. I think you, the kids at Roosevelt, you guys have it so amazing because there are so many opportunities for high schoolers to study abroad. So you guys get a wonderful head start on your journey. And then you guys are in post-COVID years as well. That's amazing. So I think that study abroad has shaped me and my passion to continue studying abroad one. And then I think the second thing that it has done is again, it's given me such amazing friends, such lifelong friends. Um, I can't tell you how valuable those friendships that I made on the programs that I've done were. Um, and ultimately, I know for the rest of my life, I'm going to use what they taught me as well as the experiences that we all made together to shape um, myself and my career. Thank you. Um, for me, like personally, it like it, it has made me really feel like a global citizen. Like I feel like way more connected to the rest of the world. Cause like sometimes here in America, it's like we, we get inundated with images of like things that are happening here, happening here, happening here. But when you're outside of this space, like you really have to be mindful of how delicate the situation is like in other places that surround you. Because it's like, you can be in a country that has like, that's bordered by five other countries. So it's like, you gotta be mindful of those things. Like, and that wasn't something that I was like used to growing up here. Um, so personally, it made me like kind of open my eyes a little bit more to the rest of the world. Um, I would say professionally, like going abroad, like it really boosted my, I don't want to say ego, but it boosted my confidence because it's like not a lot of people get to go abroad like during their college years and with such reputable programs, like you're real, like you really stand out from other people and it's like, you never know you sorry you never know you could meet somebody from in an interview from like where you were or maybe they studied there too or maybe they've always wanted to go there so now you're their subject matter expert and it just it makes you stand out um and it has opened my eyes to like different career paths like I wasn't at all interested in like diplomacy or like international relations before I did this and I wasn't I wasn't sure about it like I didn't know too much about it but in doing this, it's like we got to meet certain professionals and we got to meet the, the the coordinators and the people who create these programs. And I'm like, wow, those are those are like actually nice careers. Like I could see myself doing this. So it's like, yeah, professionally, 
professionally, it has opened my eyes to like all of the, the different possibilities. I'm now considering a career in diplomacy. So it's like, whoa, how did that happen? <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Really fantastic reflections. Um, I think that is a wonderful point in that there is a entire field out there for facilitating study abroad, for being a country director where you can work in the country and facilitate programs for students who are coming. And so it really does expand what you believe is possible for yourself and the opportunities that you're exposed to, hands down. Um, I think there's some statistics that talk about students that study abroad graduate in higher numbers than those who don't, have higher salaries um, than those who don't. And so it really does boost you in ways that unexpected. And a lot of that does have to do with that confidence that you talked about, because you've done this thing that you thought that, you know, maybe I'm not going to make it there and back, and you've done it successfully and in flying colors. And so um, that really is very empowering. Uh, so we do have a couple of questions. Um, one, did you all feel safe in your respective countries? Great uh, question. Go ahead. I, yeah, I um, so for Mexico, Mexico gets a pretty bad rap for being this country that has a lot of drug smugglers or, um, or it's just dangerous in general. Um, but that's not true. There are a lot of cities in Mexico which are very safe. In Oaxaca, me and my friends were able to go out at night without getting mugged at gunpoint or anything. Oaxaca is a pretty safe place considering it's a tourist, it's a tourist town. There are a lot of tourists who come here, who come there, and um, no, nothing, nothing bad happens. It's pretty safe. It's very, very, very safe. Awesome. Uh, go ahead. On my study abroad experience, I truly felt safer there than I did here in the States. Uh, right. Um, I truly did. And I traveled across the entire country of Ireland, as well as going to Northern Ireland. And everywhere I went, I felt safe. Of course, um, when you're studying abroad, like they said, like you're rarely at your residence where you're living, you're rarely home. You're always out because you're trying to experience the entire country in the little time that you have to be there. And so it would be times where it would be 10 o'clock, maybe even 11 o'clock at night. And we're coming back from getting ice cream and we're just walking down the streets, not a care in the world, of course. Always be conscious, always be mindful that you're in public spaces, you're, you know, you're in an open world, but honestly, I felt safe. I didn't feel like there was any threat to me um, as long as I was being mindful of my surroundings at all times, but I don't feel like I could walk at 11 o'clock at night down the street here in D.C. or even back home in Atlanta, so to be able to do that in multiple cities across Ireland was really amazing. It was super safe. <laughs> This actually came up in our program because like our, our main base, like our schoolhouse was in the, the capital city. And one of the things that the directors would talk about a lot, would, would say a lot was like, big cities have big city problems. So I, we're in school in Washington DC and then I'm from a big city. So it was like, it wasn't an issue for us at all. Like, and one of the things that got brought up was is like, there are not as many guns in other places <laughs> as there are in America. Like, and I'm not gonna get into that, that conversation, but it was like, I absolutely felt more safe there than I did here. And a lot of students felt that way, um, no matter where we were at. Like, it was just like, oh, okay, this is, this is all right. Um, yeah, like, like Riel said, like, be mindful, like, don't be ridiculous. But there would be times where we would be out at like 2, 3 a.m. And it was okay. <laughs> I think adding to Taisha's point is one, in Ireland, the police officers didn't carry guns, which was amazing because when I crossed over into Northern Ireland, I instantly recognized the differences and started to feel almost tense again. But also a lot of other countries and many other countries are more reserved if I can say that or maybe even conservative in a sense that here in America is such a thing to be flashy to wear gold chains and stuff a lot of other countries aren't like that um in the sense that 
you're just you um there no one's really checking for designer and things like that so you're also not trying to walk down the street being flashy or trying to draw attention to yourselves which is another thing which I feel like one makes you less of a target but also makes you safer of course you're American so they may know that you're a tourist with money and things like that so just be mindful but other than that you're not really seen as someone who's intentionally bragging or having something that someone else would want off of you. Sure. Um, really great reflections um, once again. And I tell people all the, all the time that I feel a lot safer abroad often than I do here in the U.S. And it really does have a lot to do with um, the gun culture that we have here in this country that doesn't necessarily exist in other places and other things. So we have a lot of really great questions. I'm hoping that we'll be able to get to all of them. So if we can just keep the responses um, a little on the shorter side, I believe the um, uh, Roosevelt students need to leave at a quarter till. Um, so the next question is, um, how did you all choose Howard? How did your major affect where you decided to study abroad? I chose Howard simply because of the opportunity. I'm a transfer student from Clark Atlanta University. And so I intentionally left Clark Atlanta because I knew that Howard had um, more opportunity for me. And my major and my major didn't put much effort into it. Again, I was accepted into a fellowship, but no matter what your major is, there are opportunities for every student's studies um, to study abroad because I was able to do a leadership course that satisfied an elective. Um, and you can study abroad to take art, to take history, any of it. Fantastic. Um, I chose Howard University also because of the opportunities. Um, there are actually a lot of factors to me wanting to choose Howard. Um, it is, uh, it produces the highest amount of black doctors because I'm a bio major and also because I live 20 minutes from here. Um, uh, yeah, um, I'm a bio major and the Oaxaca experience was the um, shadowing experience um, was for bio majors, but anyone could join. That's one of the reasons, for, that was the reason, that, that's how my major affected how I went to Oaxaca. Awesome, thanks Dennis. I chose Howard University uh, because of the legacy and the opportunity to be a part of that legacy. I, it's something that happens on this campus when you come here. It's, it's a standard that you have to meet and often we exceed it. And when you get out there into the world and you put Howard's name out there, doors open up for you. So I was definitely on board with that. And I wanted to be in Washington, D.C. because of all of the opportunities. Like, this is the capital of the United States of America. This is like a cosmopolitan city. Like, this is where you kind of want to be. Um, so yeah, in short, that's why I chose Howard University. Awesome, awesome. And so one of the um, really fantastic questions um, is how did you finance your um, experience? Uh, Riel, you had a very unique opportunity. So you wanna lead us off with that one? So my fellowship program was fully funded. You simply applied to the fellowship. And if you're accepted for the fellowship part, then all costs were covered, but students who applied but did not get in received a $1,500 grant. Um, and because I applied through an external company, it was CIEE, that little thing up there, but um, because I applied through an external company, they also offer their own funding um, and scholarships available to students, as well as if you're studying abroad during the academic year, so like for your fall or spring semester, your financial aid that you use to pay for your normal tuition can apply to your study abroad. I used my loans, $2,600 out, back to $100, but to be honest, it was worth it. So it's great worth investment, it. yeah. <laughs> um, I had a variety of different, uh, different funding. Um, so because my program was longer, it was on the expensive side. But one of the wonderful things about Howard University is that any aid that uh, you're dispersed for your regular tuition here, they will apply it. Uh, they will apply it to your abroad, uh, your abroad studies. So the scholarship that I have from Howard applied to the the tuition bill that I had with SIT, and SIT also offers their own internal scholarships, um, like merit scholarships based on GPA and like your responses to essay questions and things like that. 
And in addition to that, um, this is, I, I just wanna add this, like at the end, we had a research project and SIT has a forum or whatever that you can submit it to. And I actually was the recipient of the award for that. So I ended up getting like a thousand more dollars for the research that I completed. So it was like, there are opportunities to do, to take what you did and then get money, like more scholarships from it. Um, so yeah, mine was primarily scholarships, like institutional aid from back here, the lovely Howard University, and then um, institutional aid from SIT as well via scholarships and then research stuff. Awesome. Yeah, no, really great. Um feedback to that question. So I've also dropped a link to our website in the chat. Um, and we have a page on there that says financing, financing global experiences. So as Maya will also dropped in the chat, um, many going to an HBCU um, allows for um, opportunities for um, HBCU discounts. And so that reduces the cost of the program. There are tons of scholarships that you can apply for. And if you're doing a full semester, your um, aid will go towards paying for your program. Um, real quick question, can graduate students study abroad? So all of the programs that we work with have coursework on an undergraduate level, um, but there are internship opportunities over the summer that might be very attractive to a graduate student that you can do. Um, and I'll just go ahead and close out um, with the last question. So um, one of the really fantastic things with people being from all over the world is, you know, if you have, um, you know, I think Dennis, are your folks from Ghana? You said that you had gone there a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So a lot of students who have parents who are um, immigrated to the United States, they're maybe first generation Americans, they are doing study abroad to like their home countries to replug in and discover um, their own roots. And so that's a really fantastic um, opportunity. Um, I have heard of students being able to stay with family members and reduce their costs even further because they're not paying for housing. So that might be something that the program provider um, would be willing to work with you on. Um, but by and large, having a second language, um, you'll see when you start traveling that the majority of the people in the world have English as like their third or fourth language and we're just lagging so far behind as Americans in our language acquisition. And so being able to speak another language you know, has you at an advantage as well when you study abroad. So I just wanna thank um, our students at Roosevelt for joining us today, our Howard students for sharing your really fantastic experiences. Um, yeah, so uh, one of the questions that we didn't get to was where all have you studied? So if you wanna um, drop that in the chat if you have anything else. Um, I feel like I'm running up against time, Maya. Would you want to close it out with anything else? I just really appreciate everyone taking their time this afternoon. Um, you're more than welcome to um, I'll put my email address in the chat as well if you want to follow up um, with any questions as a study abroad advisor. And thank you all again. All right, so Ms. Rashid is putting her information in the chat our panelists are including all the other places they've gone to. And yes, Dennis, Mystica was your first experience, but certainly not the last. And you definitely found the loophole through Oaxaca because technically sophomore year is when people normally study abroad, but you found that loophole the, with Oaxaca. Yeah, for, for <laughs> spring break. Yeah, for spring yeah, break. Yeah, you definitely, you, you, yeah. you slipped in there. So yeah, <laughs> thank you guys for coming. Um, definitely follow up with Ms. Rasheed with any further questions. Um, like Taisha said, um, studying abroad really gives you such a global network. Um, as she mentioned earlier, I've been in job interviews. I've interviewed for grad school. I've met people who've been through, F through SIT like I have or studied abroad in Kenya, and we've instantly connected. So I think it's definitely very true that um, the global connection is incomparable. Um, and with that, I say one last thank you to Roosevelt High School. Thank you for being here today. Um, and we'll close the room. <laughs>